before we see the beautiful Florida sky setting up for a excellent liftoff space shuttle discovery countdown clock will resume on my mark three three two one mark. T minus nine minutes and counting the LS auto sequence has been initiated the ground launch sequencer has been initiated all continuing to go well for today's launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. Pilot Jim Kelly is now flipping switches in the orbiter's crew cabin to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses on Discovery. Just a few moments, the orbiter access arm will be retracted away from Discovery and into the launch configuration. We see it moving at this time. That arm can be extended again if necessary in just a few seconds. Illuminate your expedition to our home among the stars. Discovery copies, thank you. RPS, that is complete. PLT, OTC, perform APU pre-start. Orbiter test conductor has given pilot Kelly a go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. Once again, a configuration of switches in the cockpit, putting the APUs in a ready-to-start configuration. APU pre-start is complete. Auxiliary power unit activation will come at T minus five minutes. The APUs provide hydraulic power to the orbiter. Mission control has transmitted the signal to start the flight recorders. Two recorders will collect measurements of shuttle system performance during flight for playback after the vehicle is in orbit. T-minus five minutes and counting. Yeah, let's go for orbiter APU start. PLT, OTC, perform APU start. APU activation has been reported complete. Reconfigure heaters. Edward. Commander Weatherby is working to reconfigure the orbiter's heaters for launch. Heater reconfig complete. The ground launch sequencer has terminated liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank. Yes. 
this point, a profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. Orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify that they are ready for launch. Three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. All systems are go for the launch at this time. Just a few minutes away from the 29th voyage of Space Shuttle Discovery with a crew of seven. Coming up on pressurization of the tank holding super cold liquid oxygen propellant used to power the main engines. GLS is go for ET LO2 pressurization. Attraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood or beanie cap should take place any moment now. PLP OTC clear caution warning memory verify no unexpected errors. Any cap being removed from the top of the external tank. The next few seconds, the flight crew will close and lock their visors. T-minus two minutes to launch. Yeah, let's go for ET LH2 pressurization. Seven member crew is about to embark on the 103rd space shuttle flight in history. Discovery will transport the Expedition 2 crew to their new home on orbit and bring home the Expedition 2 crew, Expedition 1 crew, after four months in space. This mission continuing a permanent human presence in space. All systems aboard Discovery are go. T-minus one minute and counting. One minute away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. Discovery is now operating from internal power supplies. Orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors to launch configuration. At T-minus 31 seconds, Discovery's onboard computers will have control of vehicle functions. T-minus 30 seconds. 25. Thousands of gallons of water will be dumped on the launch platform in a few seconds. T-minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Go for me. Four, three, two. Liftoff of Discovery and a team of explorers shaping their destiny.
flight. Discovery has now expended two and a half million pounds of propellant. It weighs less than half of what it did at the time of its liftoff. Now at an altitude of 19 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at 17 miles. Two minutes into the flight. And the booster officer here in Mission Control confirms separation of the solid rocket boosters. Little more than six minutes of powered flight remaining now. Discovery, two engine Ben. Two engine Ben. And with that call, Discovery could make it to the transatlantic landing site at Ben Gurir, Morocco, if one engine should fail. However, all three engines are continuing to perform well.